Welcome back to Creating Cooperative Kids. I'm your host, Bill Corbett. If you're just joining us, regular viewers of the show know that I use this last segment to answer viewer questions that come into my email box. Now, to send me your parenting questions, simply send an email to questions at cooperativekids.com and perhaps I'll select yours on a future episode. In the question for today's show, the parent writes, My six-year-old son stole a small toy from a store while we were shopping. How do I handle his lying about where it came from and resolving the crime itself? So I think this is a pretty common situation that parents deal with because one, as um, I've talked about in previous segments, it is normal for children to lie about, uh, up into a certain age. And they are generally move out of that phase if a couple of conditions uh, apply. One is the parent is calm and respectful to the child if the child if the parent is setting good examples for the child and also if the child has not learned any inappropriate behaviors any coping mechanisms to get their needs met inappropriate ones that is so let's take a look at the situation for the benefit of this viewer she just suddenly discovers that a little boy is playing with a toy and uh, she is not sure what to do about this the one thing I tell parents is to remain calm, uh, to, to not get angry and to see this as potentially normal behavior. And it's also a good opportunity, maybe like a wake-up call for this mom to examine what's going on in the home. So remain calm and don't punish the child because if you punish the child, there is a potential. Uh, the potential is there. The child may go, oh, hmm. I mean, all I have to do is steal something and you'll notice me because I don't get any attention because negative attention is better than no attention at all. I also encourage parents not to ask why because you know what? Sometimes they don't know why. And you have parents saying things like, why'd you do it? Why did you do it? Because here's what happens when a parent... Parents generally think, oh, my children wouldn't lie. And they discover that they've lied. Then they're like, oh, my gosh, there's something wrong with my kids, and I've got to fix them. So the first thing we need to do, we need to understand why did you do it so that we can fix the why. But the problem is a lot of times kids will go, I don't know. And they don't know why. They truly don't know why. They are actually impulsive. A lot of children are very impulsive, and they do things, and they're not sure why. First of all, you have to understand, little children don't understand commerce. So they see a, a cool little toy in the store, and they're thinking, well, just sitting right there. Why, you know, why don't I just have it? Because they don't understand that we have to pay for things. They don't get commerce. So rule is, is, is don't ask them why. Instead, here's what I encourage parents to do. Focus on fixing a problem that may have occurred because of the stealing. So what is the problem in this case? The problem in this case is that the child has taken merchandise from a store that belongs to the store. So that's the most important thing. We've got to fix that situation. And it's important that we not focus on why they did it. Just let the, take the child with you and move forward to fix the problem and say, you know what, this toy has to go back to the store. So let's go return it to the store. Your child may say, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. It's not my fault. Why should I have to go? I didn't do it. Just say, let's do it anyway. Remember, you're not putting any focus on the child because if you put focus on the child, they're going to get more defensive and you're not going to accomplish anything. So you want to have the child go with you to the store and turn it over to the store supervisor or to the manager. The next thing you want to do is you want your child uh, to feel like they were part of fixing the process. That's more important than, than making them feel like a victim. So you want to thank them for helping you in fix this problem. The next thing is creatively lecture after the lying has occurred and much after. In, in the moment that the child has been caught in a lie, they're not likely going to be very open to learning. They're not likely going to be very cooperative. They're going to be very protective. And defense systems are still going to go up, especially if you've been a parent that's been finding fault with your children on a regular basis just because we want to keep some law and order. So after the moment has passed, the energy dies down and your child is more likely to, op to be open to learning, that may be a good time to say, I, I, I can't let anybody lie in this house. Lying isn't good. So I will 
Really appreciate it if people in this house just don't lie and then move on. In other words, you're not putting the focus on you, 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 because the more you, you, the more you say you, you, the child, put, the defense shields go up. So just be relaxed and calm and look for an opportunity to talk about being truthful and not lying. Uh, another thing is acknowledge examples of truthfulness. Reinforce positive behavior. Every time you catch your child telling the truth, you want to make a big deal out of it and say, you know what? You told me the truth about how that ended up in the living room, and I really appreciate that because those instances of reinforcing the things that you want to see will uh, motivate the child to do that more. So again, where you put attention, you'll get more of. If you put attention on the bad things the child does, there's a, in essence, he may do more of that. You want to put all the attention on the good things, the positive behavior that you're truly looking for. Lastly, and this is a tough one for parents, you got to look around the child's environment. What's going on that may be teaching them or motivating them to lie even more? So you want to be real careful about that. If somebody calls you for the second time in one day and you don't want to tell your child, I'm not here, don't hide from phone calls, don't hide what you do because they're going to learn to do the same. I hope this answers that viewer's question and helping us understand the best way to handle when a child brings something home from the store that they took and didn't buy. The next time your child lies, remain calm at that moment and focus more on fixing any problems that may have occurred as, as a result of the lie. Then, when things have calmed down, let your child know that lying is not okay and move on. Also, take the time to examine any adult behaviors in your family that could be reinforcing lying and work on them instead. Now, let's review what else we learned in today's show. We met Miss Connecticut 2011, Morgan Amarone, who wrote the new children's book, Madison's Journey, to help children understand the effects of cancer and how they can live a powerful life for themselves and for those afflicted with, with disease. A licensed ASL instructor, Courtney Kumjan, taught us about all the wonderful things that signing can do for children and families. And consultants Amy Greenbaum and Anne Marie Diarco empowered us with a new plan on taking the initiative to be our own children's educational advocate project manager. Join me for future episodes of this program as I offer more tools to help you rebuild your discipline toolbox as an awesome parent or teacher. If you'd like to get this program in your local viewing area, contact my office to find out how. Remember, making the world a better place to live begins at home as engaged, encouraged, and masterful parents. I'm Bill Corbett. I'll see you the next time on Creating Cooperative Kids. real